Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News this Saturday, the 14th day of September 2024. And as always, we have some very important stories to bring to you with respect to what's going on right now in our world as the stage is being set for last day's Bible prophecy being fulfilled right in front of our very eyes as we see Israel again in the crosshairs of the world. And also, we're going to have two really interesting stories here from Israeli sources that contradict each other with respect to the Philadelphia corridor. That's the border between Gaza and Egypt. So we'll, we'll relate those to you. All right. The first story is fascinating. Remember the last couple of days we talked about that daring Syrian raid that uh, the commandos there went over into Syria and destroyed this place where it was a, an Iranian facility there in preparation, obviously, for some type of huge major assault on Hezbollah and uh, the whole northern part of the um, to save the whole northern part of Israel and to hit into southern Lebanon and probably further. Anyway, what we find out now is that commandos actually seized Iranian scientists in this daring Syrian raid. So it wasn't just destroying the facility there. It was actually seizing some of the scientists. Now, Hamas's Rafa Brigade, we're told, now is dismantled. 80% of the Philadelphia tunnels are destroyed, announced by the IDF. In another story, NORAD has intercepted two Russian military jets near the U.S. coast. I guess they do this quite often. Russia feels the need to to play with us and get into uh, move from international waters into you know um, our territory near our coast. So we got that story because we always have to remember Russia is an enemy, and Russia will eventually be in a larger position in the world than the U.S. According to last day's Bible prophecy, with military power. And finally, the fourth story, handing it over to Hamas, taking back the Philadelphia corridor would be far from simple. And this story is going to con contradict uh, story number two. So it's going to be interesting as we read all these, because we just give them to you here, folks. And a lot of times, who knows what the answer is? OK, the first one, commando sees Iranian scientists in daring Syrian raid. In a bold operation this week, Israeli commandos launched a raid on a secretive Syrian research facility in the Masyaf region, tar targeting Iranian-linked activities. The IDF Special Forces infiltrated the heavy fortified site, believed to be part of the Syrian Scientific Studies and Research Center, a hub for advanced weapons development, including precision missile production. Now, according to multiple reports, the commandos arrived via helicopter and executed a swift and precise strike, abducting, here it comes, several Iranian scientists and seizing sensitive intelligence, intelligence materials. The SSRC has long been suspected of serving as a critical node in Iran's regional arms supply, supply chain, particularly in support of Hezbollah and other Tehran-backed militias. This raid follows a series of Israeli airstrikes aimed at Iranian positions in Syria, underscoring Israel's determination to curb Iranian influence in the region. Western intelligence sources suggest that the operation was aimed at disrupting Iran's missile development, which poses a direct threat to Israel. The abduction of Iranian personnel marks an escalation, and I'll say it does, in Israel's covert war against Iran's military presence in Syria, signaling a shift from air airstrikes to ground operations targeting key figures in Iran's weapons program. Israeli officials have neither confirmed nor denied the operation in line with their policy of ambiguity regarding military actions in Syria. And again, the facility has been a repeated target for Israeli strikes in the past and played a significant role in the development of Syria's chemical weapons program and missile technology, often in coordination with Iran's experts. Analysts believe that captured scientists could provide Israel with valuable intelligence on Tehran's ongoing military projects in Syria and beyond. So this is huge. In fact, there's another story that has marveled Israel being able to do this internationally. Uh, they've come in there and got these scientists out of there. So if Iran ever really needed a reason to attack Syria, much more than having Hania assassinated on their own soil, this seems to be it. Will they do anything? This is really fascinating, though, so we'll keep an eye on that. All right, headline number two. Now, this one here has some things that contradict some of the things we've talked about before. Hamas's Rafa Bridge is dismantled. 80% of the Philadelphia tunnels are destroyed, the IDF announces. Now, that's not new, but here's what's new. It says the IDF only discovered nine tunnels crossing from Gaza to Egypt, all inactive. Now, remember the story. What was it yesterday that we had where one journalist said, uh, military uh, journalist said, no, 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 they have had active tunnels there. And this is, you know, they're lying to us. So uh, here we go. This might be the story kind of stories they're talking about, because as you're going to see, 
Uh, what this story does is not blaming the current administration in Egypt for the problem that's there in Gaza. All right, here we go. After three months of intense fighting, the IDF announced on Friday that the Rafah Brigade of Hamas is now defeated and dismantled with over 2,000 terrorists eliminated. Army radio reported that Israeli forces found only nine tunnels, only nine that crossed into Egypt, all of them being closed off before the IDF arrival. According to the IDF statement, the 162nd Division destroyed 13 kilometers or about eight miles of underground tunnels and shafts and around 80% of all tunnels near or under the Philadelphia corridor along the Gaza-Egypt border. Did the Divisional Engineering Forces and the Yahalon, that's the Combat Engineering Commando, uh, continue to locate and destroy underground routes and terrorist infrastructures in the area, said the IDF. In the last three weeks, they've been focused on fighting in the Tel al Sutan neighborhood, Hamas's final stronghold in the area. So they're just about finished with the final stronghold of this, uh, any holdouts from Hamas. Now, here it's interesting. According to Army Radio, the IDF reported the discovery of 203 interconnected tunnels extending up to 300 meters or two tenths of a mile from the Egyptian border, with only nine, though, crossing into Egypt. This discovery was contrary to previous statements made by Israeli officials. For example, when Israeli Justice Minister official Gilad Noam appeared before the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, in May, he noted approximately 50 tunnels were crossing the border. But now we're told there are only nine and they were all inactive. All of the tunnels, here we go, according to this article, crossing to Egypt were found to be either blocked or collapsed, with most extending only a short distance into Egyptian territory. Army radio reported the IDF is completing preparations to be able to destroy all the tunnels in or near the Philadelphia quarter within 48 hours after the order is issued. Destroying the tunnels in Rafa will reportedly take approximately three weeks. Now, here's where it gets fascinating. The report that no active smuggling tunnels were found in the Philadelphia quarter came shortly after Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu emphasized the importance of Israel's presence there to prevent smuggling. Army radio reported that most of the underground smuggling, now get this, occurred during Mohammed Morsi's presidency in Egypt from 2012 to 2013. This smuggling included large machinery that Hamas used to develop its weapons production facilities and engineering capabilities. By the time Morsi was removed from power by current President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi and Egypt took measures to block most tunnels, Hamas had already had significant capabilities while continually smuggling things overground, especially through the Rafah border crossing. Now, so according to this article, the tunnels have been irrelevant basically since 2013, where el-Sisi has stopped that from happening. But the damage was already done during the time Mohammed Morsi was there, who was a friend, of course, the Muslim Brotherhood. And, uh, you know, fortunately, he was overthrown. But according to this, the tunnels have not been used, actually, for some 11 years. Now, what's happened is a lot of material has gone overground at the crossing and brought over through trucks. And that makes sense because you've got the, the people there at the border watching and, you know, that turned the blind eye to it. But it is interesting, a, a total, total view, a whole total look about the idea of the tunnels there, that basically they've been irrelevant for many, many years because uh, Egypt did lock them down. But all things are said and done now with respect to that. So who knows? Who knows? Well, we're going to have another article after this next one that's going to talk about the tunnels and the importance of that. So we'll let you, we'll, we'll let you decide. But here's a NORAD. Intercepts two Russian military jets near the U.S. coast. Russian military jets were caught prowling off the Alaskan coast on Wednesday. According to the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD detected, tracked, and intercepted two um, Russian military aircraft operating the Alaska Air Defense Identification Zone. On September 11th, the fighter jets in the U.S. Uh, conducted the intercept. The Russian aircraft remained in international airspace and did not enter American or Canadian sovereign airspace. But the activity was not seen as a threat, and they'll continue to monitor this. And what we're told is, uh, basically, this is you know national security. This is where sovereign airspace ends and, and international airspace begins, and they're playing with that. So what it says, the, re the release of this noted that Russia routinely pokes its military nose in the Alaska zone there, which is not surprising. So they're playing games with, uh, particularly this administration, because they know they can get away with it. They're... Uh, you know, obviously they're upset because of the weaponry we give to uh, Ukraine with respect to fighting the Russian army. So they're playing games with this. But, you know, 
it's it is worrisome when you have that when you have these fighter jets that are right on the edge between the international border and uh, american airspace because if they had crossed into american or canadian airspace uh Boy, we don't even want to think of what can happen. All right, now here we go. Headline number four. It's, it's going to contradict headline number two. Handing it over to Hamas, taking back Philadelphia corridor would be far from simple. Critics, including ex security officials, argue debate over Israel's control of the Philadelphia corridor, uh, politically driven and as strategically insignificant. However, they mislead the public with oversimplified solutions. In a May 8th interview, U.S. lame duck President Joe Biden said, I made it clear that if they go into Rafah, I'm not supplying the weapons. This statement followed the IDF's launch of an operation aimed at taking control of the Philadelphia Corridor and the city of Rafah, which they have done. At the time, Israel was facing an unprecedented international campaign to pressure it out of invading Hamas's southernmost stronghold in Gaza. The global community expressed concern that Israel's actions would exacerbate the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, further escalating the already catastrophic situation. Now, today's public discourse over Israel's intent to maintain control of the Philadelphia Quarter highlights the denial within Israel's security establishment about the threat Gaza posed before October 7th. The issue, issue has now become a central topic of public debate. Skeptics, egged on by former senior security officials, are, le are leading part of the public to associate uh, to associate this objective, which is unequivocally based on security considerations, and they're trying to make it seem like political mo uh, motives. They even describe it as a spin designed to scuttle the hostage agreement for some unknown reason. The entire Philadelphia issue is fake news, dismissed one senior official, stating that there's no need to overstate the importance of the Philadelphia corridor and the Netzarim corridor in preventing Hamas from reconstructing since it has been dismantled and since Hamas has been set back 30 years. Another official claimed that the control of the Philadelphia corridor is meaningless and even called us the greatest sham since the establishment of the state. Now, what they're echoing is what this previous story, the second story we did said, that look, it hasn't even been used, this Philadelphia corridor, for, since 2014. The tunnels are shut up. Um, they, it was used big time then, but all the munitions, all the trucks, all the you know, guns and whatever else was brought overland, not underground. So... Again, this is how this is what this article is arguing against people saying this. Using the authoritativeness that comes from their security backgrounds, these former officials are trying to instill fear in the public at the prospect of taking responsibility for two million Gazans. They promise that the Gaza problem has been neutralized for the foreseeable future and call on us to close this chapter on Gaza and go to elections. See, they want to have a different government come in. To make matters worse, though, these irresponsible statements are compounded with the promise that had already been made in the past, according to which the Philadelphia corridor can be retaken the moment it's needed to ensure our security. One of the officials even said it's just a 45-minute drive to retake the 14-kilometer stretch alongside the border between Gaza uh, the Gaza Strip in Egypt. And the article goes on to say, the inconsistency reflecting these claims gives one pause. On the one hand, they claim that the Philadelphia Quarter is strategically insignificant, but on the other hand, this insignificant region could be easily retaken once the ceasefire expires. To be clear, the article goes on to say, such statements provide false hopes to the general public by implying these are simple solutions to complex and strategic security issues. And so they, the writer concludes, let's start with the basics. Hamas has never agreed to release 109 Israeli hostages in exchange for withdrawal from the Philadelphia corridor. The corridor, we've mentioned this before, was only one of 29 amendments submitted by Hamas to the American-Israeli proposal. The other 28 pertain to the Netzarim corridor, a complete withdrawal from Gaza, the end of the war, release of Palestinian prisoners, and the rec reconstruction of Gaza after the war, among others. Otherwise, one might presume that Israel's political, political leadership might have faced an entirely different dilemma. Anyway, moreover, the decision to return to the Philadelphia corridor after a ceasefire and not and will never be a tactical military decision that could be easily implemented based solely on how fast a tank can travel or how fast three brigades can be mobilized. As in any other wartime decision, it exists within a web of political interests, international pressure, and a strategic objective vis-a-vis -vis Egypt and the IDF and the Israeli public as well. So what this person is saying is, look, it, it, it is still a huge problem, the corridor there, the tunnels, you know, like this mil other military uh, writer said the other day, no, they were, they were operative. They were going on at the same time. Now, this article says they weren't. Uh, the other person said, yes, they were, but they, the, you know, the powers that be told them to shut up. 
And so who knows who to believe on something like this? What we do know is this. Israel, you know, is uh, has a whole world against them. Uh, the people, the, the, the leftist press in Israel can't wait to get rid of Netanyahu as the prime minister. And so does most of the rest of the world, including the Biden administration. And so that's why they keep trying to say, well, this whole Philadelphia corridor thing is a hoax, trying to keep the war going on, trying to keep Netanyahu in office. Well, let's face it, there's, the war is going to continue to go on with our top story, which we just saw, and that's going to be Hezbollah in Lebanon. So we're going to see the, the fighting moving from the south to the north, and it's going to be huge. It's going to be worse. I think it'll be a lot more dead than we saw in Gaza. So that's what's taking place. So, But it is interesting to get these two points of view. And here we are sitting back trying to, you know, basically relate what the story, what the real story is. And we get two opposing points of view. Who knows? But we do know this. Israel's security is paramount. And they got to take care of themselves. And they should be guarding the borders. It's you know, because of, you know, Lord knows what can come into Gaza and then get to the rest of the uh, country. But the good news is that the great majority of Gaza uh, armies have been eliminated of Hamas, soldiers dead, weapons destroyed. And so they have been set back many, many years. And that's great news. All right. Anyway, that's the latest here. We'll give you more stories when they come about. But as we always see, there's never a dull moment there is there. Okay, I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. Until next time, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless.